debates and decisions that are shaping our continent now in Europeans. It happened just like that. We were at home when the guerrillas came. They asked us if they could buy some animals for food. We said no, we only had a few. So they left. Around 15 days later, the army came. They asked for food. We said no. Then the guerrillas came again. They beat up my husband. They beat me up as well, but not that badly. They say they were giving us two hours to leave because we helped the army. They thought we had given them food and other things, so they threw us out of our home. Viviana is one of over four million displaced persons in Colombia. They are bullied out of their homes by armed gangs and seek refuge in the cities where they add to the swelling slum population. Hundreds pour into Bogota on a daily basis. Euronews travelled to Nariño in the southwest, a region from where many displaced persons originate, an area where armed gangs roam. This was a poor but peaceful region. Isolated, yes, but with its own culture. In the last 10 years, it has had problems with illegal crops, with armed gangs, and a very high murder rate. All of this added to the poverty and has made the situation much worse. The Nariño region is a wilderness with many inaccessible valleys, which makes the battle against illegal crops and armed gangs extremely difficult. Pasto is the regional capital, close to the border with Ecuador. It's here the European Union backs a peace lab. It's a program in peace building, respect for human rights and peaceful coexistence, as well as promoting strong government and the principles of democracy. It also contributes to economic development. The European Union invested 33 million euros and the community organizations developed projects with the people. The projects must be developed by farmers organizations. These people are the main participants and they evaluate if a project is worthy or not. It's difficult in a region where bandits threaten community organizations and their leaders, but some of them have decided to stand up to the gunmen. In plena guerra. During the war, there was lots of violence. We, together with other community leaders, decided to take a risk and challenge the gangs and reach out to the communities. When we started, all the talk was about the violence and the difficulties. With EU funds, we are planting coffee, coca, sugarcane, vegetables and fruits. Now we have hope. We can dream. A peace lab is not only an economic aid, it helps to rebuild the social fabric torn asunder by violence. They want to reconstruct civil society destroyed by the cocaine trade, a trade that brings not only money. Now people say that nothing can generate as much money as cocaine. I agree, but cocaine brings violence. The highest murder rates in Nariño are in the cocaine territories, because it's business conducted with armed gangs. It is a cursed prosperity, a violent prosperity, a bloody prosperity. Reaching an illegal farm is not easy in such difficult terrain, and therefore stamping out the cocaine trade is an arduous task. And this is a major problem for the peace labs. To keep things under control is easy in a city like Pasto, but it's in the countryside that things get complicated. The soil here is rich, capable of producing four harvests of cocaine a year. Trying to re-establish traditional farming is problematic. However, some farmers, with EU help, are taking the risk. And it hands those that do the chance to live a normal life.
We have a lot of hope, a lot of dreams. We want to create something for our daughter. EU money helps to set up animal husbandry projects. Even if some of the animals bred are considered pets in Europe, the qui, similar to a guinea pig, is considered a delicacy in Colombia. They are producing coffee here and it has a good reputation. After the cocaine comes the coffee. Here nobody wanted to work as normal farmer. They said cocaine was better. I learned 25 to 30,000 pesos a day. Around 10 euros, they said. We paid 12,000. But now, because of crop destruction, we are finding people to work. However, the government is causing further problems with its iron glove policy to stamp out cocaine production. The army sends soldiers in to destroy the crops. They also crop spray from the air. It destroys the cocaine and everything else. They come unannounced and spray crops over a wide area. For producers, it's total devastation. We want the government to stop the copper spraying from the air. We know cocaine is not the solution. Farmers are screaming, stop this, stop this. This operation should be carried out on the ground. The European Commission is continuing to work in Colombia. 160 million euros in aid has been allocated to the country until 2013. Fernando Cadez Garcia is head of the EU delegation in Colombia. The peace labs help the peace process. The European Union wants to guide Colombians and their government to a peaceful solution to the armed conflict. Colombia has had its fair share of violence in recent times and people are becoming weary. In the last few months, demonstrations against the bloodshed have taken place in the country's major cities. It's here on the streets that the victims are remembered and mourned. And it's here that hope exists that the work of the Peace Labs will bring about an end to the cycle of bloody violence.